Hey all, welcome to Parker's Reefs. On today's episode, we're gonna address and hopefully fix a number of potential fail points in my dream reef tank with the Reef Factory Salinity Guardian. All right, thank you for joining me on another episode of Parker's Reefs. And I have to admit, this is not a product review. It's merely a product that I've been waiting to come out for some time now. And as soon as it did come out, in Australia at least, it did force me to open up my wallet, dust it off and purchase this here, the Reef Factory Salinity Guardian. Because for those of you who don't know, Salinity is a potential massive fail point on this dream reef tank and for a number of factors that I'll go over with you. First and foremost, my skimmer is plumbed into the drain, which means it can continually overflow and keep draining out into the drain, causing a lot of salt water to disappear. Combine that with the fact that my RO reservoir is automated and has unlimited RO top off water on hand, which obviously is another potential fail point. Combine that with the fact that I run an automatic water change that is automatically taking water out of this tank and putting water back in this tank, another failure point. Then you combine that with the fact that I'm actually putting extra salty, in fact, 1.052 salinity water into this tank, but I'm only putting half as much into the tank that I'm taking out, and that's because I'm using the extra water difference to run extra calcosa. And you can quickly see how easily it would be for Salinity run, to run awry on this Dream Reef tank. So it's something that I've been sweating over a little bit. I don't like to have things that I know are potential fail points without any sort of um, safety check in place. Now, while over the last year and a half, I've been manually checking Salinity in this tank each day, in fact, normally a couple times a day with my digital Milwaukee refractor, it's something that I'm always a little bit conscious of because any one of those automations can go awry and uh, it would basically mean the end of this tank. It would wipe out all the coral, which would potentially then have a flow on effect to wipe out the fish. And um, no one wants to start their dream reef tank again from scratch, particularly not from an automation that just went haywire. So as soon as I heard about the Reef Factory Salinity Guardian, I was pretty excited. Now, let me explain my reasons why salinity monitoring devices are not new. In fact, things like Neptune Apex and GHL, all sorts of controllers out there have salinity probes that have been around for a long time and can then give you notifications or make some actions based off that salinity. My problem is I've never trusted those probes. Now, I don't know whether I trust the refactory one or not yet. I've not tried it out. It's still in the box. We're going to open it up, set it up and install it and try it out together. However, the team at refactory assure me that their salinity probe is not like any other salinity probe on the market. It's much more precise, much more accurate. So. Let's put it to the test. We'll open up this box, see what it's like, install it on the Dream Reef Tank. We'll give it a good run for a week or two, and then I'll share with you all my results right here. Let's jump into it. All right, here it is, the Reef Factory Salinity Guardian or Salinity Monitor. Just like all of their products, it tells you online controlling, push alarms, smart reef. Basically what that means, it connects into their smart reef app, which then does allow you to do some actions based off that. But most importantly for me in this situation, it actually gives me push notifications should my salinity get too high or too low based on the parameters I set. So I'm pretty keen to see how that goes. You get the QR code to download the app, set it all up. There's some more features here listed like Wi-Fi communication, controlling the device, smart reef ready. All the things you expect from a uh, reef factory, but uh, let's open him up. You can see we get the usual sort of unboxing experience. We get uh, some instruction cards here in a few different languages. We're not gonna worry about those. We get the little display itself, or I guess it's not just the display, it's the brains, but uh, essentially it looks like we have a power, we have a temperature probe, and we have a uh, salinity probe connection there, which should do the job nicely. We get the probe itself, which interestingly has shipped dry. That's interesting to me. Normally probes are sent with a little fluid solution on them. This one's obviously a bit different. Um, We'll see how that works out. We get uh, some calibration fluid, always good. So once you get this to 25 degrees Celsius, it should read exactly 35 parts per thousand of salinity. Let's see how that goes. We get a uh, power supply here with a few different uh, adapters. We're not gonna need that one or that one. We only want the Australian one. And then uh, lastly, we get a little acrylic mount so you can uh, set this probe up and position it where you want. I've already got a, a probe mount in my sump, so I shouldn't need this. Um, that being said, 
it's a pretty basic unit. It's simple, it's fairly slim line, just two bits of acrylic with some uh, screws and nuts that you can then position this to get the height you need wherever in uh, your sump, you can hook it over the edge there and secure it with the screw. But like I said, I won't be using that. So first and foremost, let's rip this uh, power open, click in this uh, power. All right, we've got ourselves a 12 volt, two amp power supply ready to go. The rest of that can move aside. Let's uh, take the uh, cover off. Well, the wire tie is very tight on there. We get nice length on the uh, unit here. The temperature probe is exceedingly long. The uh, power is fairly short and the uh, BNC connector is fairly short, but bear in mind the uh, BNC uh, connection on the other side of the probe has got a bit of length as well. So interestingly, yeah, you can run the temperature probe a long way. I'm assuming the temperature probe is to ensure that uh, it temperature com uh, compensates and make sure that uh, salinity reading is accurate. And then uh, let's open this probe. All right, it's a um, fairly interesting looking unit. It's got this little uh, threaded connection here. It's got, uh, looks like a seal. So you could actually like seal it into a, a bit of pipe work and um, not have to actually have it in your sump. You could have it in line if you wanted to. Fairly standard BNC connector. It's got a um, bit of a strange sort of plasticky feel to it. And like I said, it has shipped dry. There appears to be no exposed elements in the end here. I'll get a close up of that so you can check it out. But um, it's definitely an interesting looking probe. There is a couple of little uh, plastic burrs in there, which hopefully don't cause any sort of issues. I'm not gonna clear them out because I don't know if that's part of the probe or not, but um, we'll give it a shot. I guess the next thing for me to do is uh, get under the cabinet in uh, my Dream Reef tank, mount this thing up. Oh, I should point out there should be, should be. Yeah, there is. We get a little bit of adhesive Velcro so we can um, stick that onto the back of this controller here and put that up in our uh, cabinet or wherever we want uh, to mount the display. Um, it's not super important because you are going to be able to read that value on the app as well as get push notifications if it goes out of range. But um, you get this pretty slick looking display so you may as well have it somewhere you can see it. So um, I'll mount that somewhere semi-permanent. Of course, I can always move it. It's only uh, Velcro, but um, yeah, enough talking. Let's install it and see how it goes. All right, now just following the instructions in the manual, I have installed the probe away from the heaters, away from where my RO goes in, and also away from the skimmer so there's no micro bubbles getting near the probe. I've also got the probe just the depth in the water that it needs to be, and it is also straight up and down as the angle is important, but check the manual for further instructions there. From there, you just rip out your uh, phone with a uh, QR reader, go to the uh, code there, and that will take you to the uh, website, which has the manual, and you can follow along from the manual there. You'll see it's quite simple. Effectively, all you need to do is connect to the Wi-Fi the device is emitting. Once you're connected to that, you can go to the uh, URL and set the device up. So we'll follow along. We can see that it should be a RFSG with then some random numbers. We'll go back over to my Wi-Fi. There it is there. I've got quite a few Reef Factory devices, but uh, we'll put the password in, which is Reef Factory, all one word. So we'll go back to that uh, Wi-Fi, put in the password which uh, my screen recording does not show for uh, security purposes. And uh, now we're connected. So if I go back to the manual again, it'll show us the URL we need to go to. If I scan around there, I can see it is down there, the saliniteguardian.io. You can just click on that directly from the manual and then you'll be prompted with these setups. So I've gone to English and uh, now I can select the range, which I'm happy with, which is the default seems pretty good. I can then pick my uh, Wi-Fi and enter in my uh, password, which I'll just uh, blur out for uh, the purpose of this video. And then it'll connect to your Wi-Fi. You can see now we're connected, go through to next. It'll ask me to log into my uh, Reef Factory uh, login. If you're yet to have a login, you can create an account here, but um, as I do have a number of the devices, I can just log straight in. And you can see we get the notification to say the device is connected up to my Smart Reef system. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna jump out of the uh, Wi-Fi from the device itself and go back to my home Wi-Fi, just because um, it might make things a little bit neater. So I'm gonna jump in there. Go back over to uh, Parker 5, which is our um, 5 gigahertz network, even though you must connect the uh, refactory to the 2.4 gigahertz network. And uh, now you can see in my uh, app that the device is connected and showing a salinity of 34.3. 
All right, next up is a quick calibration. Now, throughout this setup process, I have had the calibration fluid that was included sitting in my sump just to bring it up to temperature, or at least close to temperature. I then grabbed the probe. You should actually give that a little dry off, but um, I'm going to just give it a shake off and sit it in the calibration fluid and leave it in there for 60 seconds. Now, while it's in there, after that 60 second period, you can jump into the app as you can see on screen now, go into settings, calibrate, and then uh, you're pretty well done. So you can take that probe out, dry it off again so you don't get that calibration fluid into your water. You can see the display's gone to zero salinity, which is a very quick reaction, I must say myself. Install it back into the sump at that correct height. The included spacer is there to ensure you get the correct height. I used a zip tie, but um, you can use either. That works fine. And you can see that the uh, salinity instantly starts to read what your tank is. And for my tank right at the moment is just a touch low. All right, guys, there you have it. That is how easy it is to unbox, set up and install the Salinity Guardian from Reef Factory. Now, I have to say, this was not a planned review. This is just a product that I knew I needed due to the huge number of risks that I run in my reef tank here. From the auto water change, the auto skimmer drain, the limitless top off, the um, high salinity auto water change, there's a lot of things that could go wrong. And when I found out Refactory were coming out with this device, I just had to jump on it because I know it will now let me sleep a lot easier. Now, there are a few pros and cons that I'll go over with you. Some of them will be just related to myself, but that's all I can really comment on. So I'll share them with you. I'll let you guys make up your own opinion whether this device is suited for your reef tank or not. Let's start off with the cons so we can finish on a high. All right, so the first con I will mention is price because that's one that impacts all of us. I'm not excluded from that. This guy in Australia is 570 Australian dollars and it's gonna to translate to somewhere around that no matter where you are in the world, which is a heck of a lot of money. I know a lot of people out there are gonna say you are well and truly on the way price-wise to a fully fledged aquarium controller. You may as well go all in. Now, in defense to that, Refactory have said that the probe they use in this Salinity Guardian is far superior to other ones out there in the market which I'm hoping is the case because in my experience, salinity probes on uh, other aquarium controllers, I won't drop names, are basically useless. They just drift about, they give false readings, and it gets to the point where you cannot trust the result. If you can't trust the data, you may as well not have the data. Now, in my limited experience with the Refactory Salinity Guardian so far, is not only is it very accurate, but it's very quick too. Any little adjustment, the device shows it straight away. And I saw that when I took the probe out of uh, my tank water and put it into some of the new salt water that's coming into my tank, which does read at 1.052 specific gravity. It picked that up straight away, started beeping and sending me push notifications to say that my salinity was high. So I'm quite impressed with its resolution, its speed and its accuracy, which I guess maybe offsets a little bit of the price of that uh, device. All right, the next con I wanna talk about, and it's something that will hopefully change in the future because I know Reef Factory are drastically expanding their staff, but at this point in time, the Salinity Guardian is just a monitor. Reef Factory are known for having incredible actions on their app and their software, which is super easy to use and you can build up some amazing automations. Unfortunately, at this point in time, the Salinity Guardian is not enabled for actions. So you cannot alter the dosing pump, whether it be the large or the triple or the single, based off your salinity results. I'm hoping in the future you can because I think that'd make a pretty nifty little ATO and auto water change system where it was measuring your salinity, also measuring your sump height, and then altering your auto water change and top off values based on that information. At this point in time, that's not possible. However, you can get the push notifications to your phone and of course the emails when the salinity goes either above or below the range that you set for your aquarium, which is worth it for me at this point in time. All right, the last little con that I will point out, and it is, I think, just one for me. I like to measure my salinity in specific gravity, which kudos to the Refactory family there. They have made it possible that you can change in the app and also on the display so that it reads in specific gravity. However, with the number of digits on the display here, there is only three. So while my specific gravity at the moment is 1.0255, I can't actually get all those digits on there. So the device just shows me 255, which, like I said, I am splitting hairs here, but it would have been pretty nifty if I could get that full specific gravity on the device itself. 
All right, onto the highs because I promised we'd like to finish on a high. First and foremost in the pro column is the ease of setup. Refactory gear is so simple to set up and this was absolutely no exception to that list. It took me probably two or three minutes, including getting the device calibrated, getting it mounted in my aquarium and joining it onto my Refactory Smart Reef app. It was so simple, I could set my parameters and bang, we were away and running. No more days spent pulling your hair out, doing things like that when you're trying to add a new bit of tech to your aquarium. Couple minutes and you're up and running. You cannot ask for any more than that. Next up would be the accuracy, resolution, and speed of change of the results in The Guardian. I'm super impressed by it. I was not expecting to go to the fourth decimal place, so I was expecting to see 1.025. When I saw it went to 1.0255, I was super impressed, and likewise, it's uh, decimal places on all of the other measurements too, including parts per thousand, do have an extra decimal place there, which is super nifty. It's really good to see those fine changes of salinity in your aquarium, especially when you are doing things like I am because it just gives you a little bit of a heads up that whilst things are still within range, there has been a trend of change, which is um, important. You can fix them before they get out of bounds. So super impressed with the accuracy, the resolution, and the speed at which it shows those changes because um, when I had the probe out of the uh, calibration fluid, I tried putting it into some of my new tank water, which I do run at 1.052 specific gravity. The device instantly went over to 1.052, showed me that it was high, started beeping an alarm, sent me a push notification, an email notification, notification and then of course I took it out of that and put it back in my aquarium it instantly settled back down I went back into the range where it was happy the alarm went off all was good super impressive at how responsive it is granted it is a brand new probe so I'll be curious to see how that goes over the coming weeks months and even years and finally, the last pro was how slick the little display is. I do love the white liquid crystal display on there it looks very very modern super easy to read and will look at home on any aquarium all right, guys, there you have it. That was my impromptu Salinity Guardian review. I wasn't actually ever planning to do a review on this. I just saw it hit the shelves at my local fish shop. And like I touched on, it was a device that I knew I had to have. It was one of the few bits of reef aquarium gear that I had to have, not wanted to have. And like I touched on, it's because of all those crazy automations that I am doing on this tank. This has got to be the cheapest bit of insurance I have on the tank behind me right here. I'll leave it up to you guys to decide whether it's suitable for your reef tank or not, because um, last thing you need is some YouTuber telling you you need to buy something when maybe perhaps you don't have to but like I touched on I absolutely did so it earned my hard-earned dollars I'll wrap the video up there guys if you've got any questions comments or feedback pop it in the comment section down below as touched on I have bought this device so it is with me here to stay so if you do have any questions or anything you want me to test on it for you pop it in the comment section down below because I will have this device continuously so you can get me to try anything you want me to try with this device and I'll report back to you in the comment section there other than that guys if you've got any other than that, guys, if you could leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video and maybe even consider subscribing. It takes two seconds of your time. It costs no money at all, and I'd personally appreciate it very much. Other than that, guys, till next time, stay safe, keep reefing. Cheers. Bye.